What does Rav think about individuals or organizations that create or sell Noahide Sidur books? Would it be permitted or would it be wrong? Thank you so much. Uh, none of Gdolei Israel uh, were behind this uh, this idea. I know that the uh, Lubavitcher Rebbe uh, was very uh, uh, proud advocate of the Noahide movement, but really the, uh, the the whole thing was has changed since he died almost 30 years ago. Uh, and the Noahide movement uh, that's under uh, the auspices of Chabad is really just an extension of Chabad because in their books and in their uh, websites and everything, they're constantly bringing everybody to the Rebbe, the Rebbe is Mashiach. So in so many words, all of these Noahides that left Christianity and the idolatry of Jesus are now replacing it with the idolatry of the Rebbe. So this is obviously not a healthy thing uh, and certainly should not be done and it's forbidden to be done. Uh, as far as a Noahide Sidul, you're not going to find uh, a permission uh, in any Allahic book that says that uh, Noahides should be provided with a Allahic book, uh, with a uh, Sidur and a structured prayer, because the Noahides are supposed to pray uh, from their heart, whatever they wish, not to have a structured prayer book. If they write one for themselves, they can. But to give them a structure like that, that's not uh, something that you're going to find any of G'dolei Israel doing. Uh, that's number two. Number three, uh, it's very problematic, according to many opinions of the Chachamim, uh, to spend uh, the, uh, you know, the time actually teaching Noahides in general. Like to exclude them and just have a course uh, and a, uh, a teachings only for Noahides is problematic it's jews are not supposed to do that now i can teach now and i have many students that are noahides but i'm not excluding myself to noahides it's just simply part of my teaching if a noahide wants to show up by all means they can show up they can listen but to uh to have a program only for noahides is problematic why because our obligation is to jews and you actually have uh certain chachamim like Rav Ovadia, Rav Oyrbach, uh, um, uh, a, a uh, um, uh, well, there's a couple of other chachamim that were very, very much against it. Very, very much against it. Uh, so, uh, for them to have entire organizations just to cater to the Noahides and to sell them all these products that none of Gdolei Israel supported and even permitted, uh, obviously, that's not the way of Judaism. This is the reason why it's never been done before. Noahides have always existed. You know, it's even in the Torah. It talks about Noahides. It talks about righteous Gentiles. Noahides is not a new thing. So how come throughout the last 3,334 years that we have the Torah, that we have the great sages, that we have much greater sages that preceded us than ones that exist now, how come you're never going to find a single sage, a single Chacham, a single Rishon, a single Tana, a single Amora, a single great extraordinary Rav even, from any part of Judaism, ever write a book that structured the prayers of the, of the Noahides? Not a single time. Why? What? what? The only, this wisdom only came to the year 2000? No. It's because it's not allowed. You're not supposed to do it. They're, they're not supposed to pray for Masidu. This is not, this is not, this is not a, a, a mitzvah for them. To do so, and in fact, it's a uh, it's a very big problem. It's a very very big problem. Why? Because, it, as I've said in other uh, shulim, other lectures, that it is making a, uh, a mini Judaism. You know, it's it's making the Noahites start acting, feeling, behaving, and living as if they're Jews without the conversion. And although that seems good, it's actually not good, or else it would have been done before. Why is it not good? Because if they want to be Jews, then let them convert. But if you're going to teach them that they can, in essence, get all of the benefits of Judaism, all the holidays, all the prayers, all the different teachings, without the conversion, why should they convert? So in so many words, you're holding back conversion. And I can tell you that there is a story in the, uh, 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 in the Torah, in the Tanakh, about uh, Elisha. Elisha, the Talmud of Eliyahu Navi, Elisha Navi. He had a servant named Gehazi. Gehazi was a Jew. Gehazi was a, knew a lot of Torah. He used to teach Torah even. But Gehazi, Gemara Masechet Sanhedrin says, Gehazi has no share of the world to come. 
He has no share of the world to come. He's in Gehenom. He's never coming out. Why? He slowed down conversion. He got in the way of conversion. So when people do things that are not in line with what the sages have taught us for the last several thousand years, automatically you should assume it's wrong. You should assume it's wrong. If anything that anyone tells you is not based on the Torah of yesteryear, there's something wrong with it. There's something wrong with it. Why? Because there's nothing new under the sun. If writing books specifically, you know, by rabbis to Noahites, by rabbis to the Noahide community, writing them a sidur, writing them a, I don't know, certain types of books just to teach them. If that was a good idea, don't you think that the Rambam would have done it? He was surrounded by Noahides. Don't you think that the Ramban would have done it? He was surrounded by Noahides. Don't you think that the leaders of Hasidut that preceded the Lubavitcher Rebbe would have done it? They were surrounded by them. Don't you think that the Lubavitcher Rebbe himself would have done it? He was surrounded by it. He was even a pro-Noahide movement. But he never said to write books. He never said to do all this stuff that people are doing now in his name. Don't you think that any of the sages that literally lived among the, 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 the Gentiles, associated with them, even befriended some of them, never wrote a single book, never wrote a single sidu for the Noahides. Why? Why? Why did this idea just appear now? It's sort of like this other guy that Baruch Hashem is no longer in the picture who brought this idea uh, to the public pretending like he knows more than everybody else and he told people that Gentiles not only are allowed but they should observe the Shabbat and he had a whole little uh, thing over it and he taught people yeah yeah just that their people are wrong telling Gentiles they're not allowed to keep Shabbat that's incorrect they don't know what they're talking about meaning the Rambam doesn't know what he's talking about according to him the Rishonim the Achonim, nobody knows what he's talking about until this little Momo came to the year 2020 and that's him and another guy another uh, 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 rabbi were preaching were traveling from place to place wrote a few books I think something called the gear or something like that uh, and uh, teaching everybody oh yeah there are no hides they uh they uh they should keep shabbat guess what they were wrong then they're wrong now and eventually hashem uprooted it uprooted them from teaching to all of those people that are teaching the noahides exclusively that and they are rabbis they're jewish rabbis are teaching the noahides exclusively are writing books for noahides exclusively are, are you'll notice that they're not just doing that uh, and teaching Jews, you'll notice that they're only focusing on the Noahides. And you're not going to find that as part of the Jewish tradition, as part of the uh, Masoet. So, this is not something that any of Gdolei Israel ever did before, which by itself is a sign, an indication, and a clarification that this is forbidden. Uh, and in fact, if you go to the Abiyah Omer by Rav Ovadia, he says it's outright forbidden. Uh, if you go to some of the other Chachamim out, and he brings sources, I don't know, maybe uh, 150 sources, 100 sources of why it's forbidden. Uh, so it's, a, uh, it's, it's, not a, uh, it's not a question uh, for anyone that knows a little bit of Torah. It's only a question for the public that, generally speaking, doesn't know much Torah. Uh, and uh, so again, if you're teaching and the Noahide shows up, no problem. No problem. They could show up. They could listen to Musar lectures. It's not a problem. But... To go and make an entire uh, organization just for Noahides and you're a Jewish rabbi, not allowed. Why? Your brother comes first. Your brother comes first. So what's the motive? Why would they do it? Why wouldn't these so-called rabbis cater to their own brothers, the Jewish people? Because they're not after people. They're after money. And that's the truth. That's the truth. It's money is a priority to them over their brothers.